You are listening to the Bright Life Podcast, all about ways to stay inspired, chase your dreams, and find more gratitude in the highs and lows of the journey. I'm your host, Jessica Johnson. I'm a business owner, a part-time digital nomad, a self-growth junkie, a believer in other big-hearted women, and am all about sharing tips, tricks, lessons learned, and encouragement so we can all live our biggest, brightest lives. You ready? Let's do this. Hello and welcome. So excited to be chatting with you today. One quick note that this is the last chance to sign up for Content Business Blueprint, which is my eight-week program that teaches women how to build profitable freelance writing businesses so they can have location freedom, schedule freedom, creative freedom, and financial freedom as their own boss. I will put a link in the show notes, or you can quickly type in contentbusinessblueprint.com right now to learn more and sign up before this next round closes. Closes. So over the next few months, your life can look so completely different from taking action today and you can learn a skill that will forever enable you to be your own boss and to get clients and income anytime you desire and to choose work that's fulfilling to you so you wake up excited every day and to just feel the pride and security of having an income stream that lets you earn for yourself and feel so proud seeing those checks roll in that you got as the boss, right? Working from anywhere in the world with your laptop. So check out contentbusinessblueprint.com if you're interested in that. But today I wanted to talk about a few traits that will serve you as an entrepreneur or business owner right? So, and in, and really in creating your dream life. So if you dream of being your own boss, if you dream of publishing a book one day, if you dream of speaking on stages, if you dream of being a leader, right? These will really help you. And I think that they are perhaps the most important traits that you need. Would love to hear what you think, but these are the ones that immediately stood out to me when I was thinking through this question, right? So the first one that I think will really serve you, if you have it, and if you don't have it, you can cultivate it and you can play with bringing more of it into your life. But the first one is vision, right? Because I think you need that vision for what the future can be in order to actually put yourself out there and to take action that might make you nervous and to try things you haven't done before. And so I think it can really, really serve other women and entrepreneurs if they can start to imagine their future in like high definition. So something that I do almost every day is I write out when I'm doing my mindset practice or journaling. I write out gratitude for the future that I actually want that might not even be here yet, but I say thank you so much that my life looks like this. Say thank you so much that I start my day in this way. Thank you so much that my relationship feels like this, right? And I include things that I'm drawing in from my future vision and things that I desire and goals that I have. And that really keeps me inspired and it keeps me going even on the hard days. And honestly, even when things feel like they're not working, when I start to get into that flow of imagining what I desire and imagining what my life can be, I start to feel more positive again. And it's not about this false positivity or things always being shiny or never feeling the bad emotions at all. Trust me, part of my journaling and mindset practice is actually working through all the bad emotions. I have a part of it that's completely dedicated to all my mindset wobbles, all the things I am pissed about, (laughs) right? Like all the fears that I have is a big one. Um, So by all means, include those things, but definitely make part of your practice, right? Or your traits, um, your characteristics, your qualities to be about vision. I think that can really serve you as a, a business owner and entrepreneur. I think a second one that stands out to me is courage. And I don't mean confidence, right? Like obviously confidence is a great one, but I think even more than confidence, courage is one to really cultivate. Because let me tell you, 
I do pretty much everything scared. <laughs> like there's not a day in my business, I don't think, that I am not kind of nervous about something, right? Because I'm always trying to figure something new out or push another edge or reach another level. And so I'm almost always a little bit fearful during the day. And the thing, the difference is from how I used to be to now is I don't let that fear stop me. And I don't spend so much time focusing on it, right? Like I might move through it. I might look at it and kind of try and reframe it or massage it or see where it's coming from. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. What really matters is that I move through it because that's what builds the evidence in my life that I can do scary things, that they're worth it, that I almost always see a positive benefit on the other side, whether it's in business or client relationships or even just my own personal development. Like I kind of now get a kick off of breaking through my own kind of layers and realizing another part of myself that I didn't know was like hiding in there that I want to overcome, right? And so I think that courage is one to really cultivate and to lean into and to look for little ways you can practice. So even if it's just taking up room in the weight section at the gym, right? Or having a conversation with a colleague or deciding what you really do want to do for dinner instead of letting someone else choose and you practicing using your voice to say so. There's so many little ways that you can practice it that don't have to feel as big and scary. But when the big and scary times come around, you'll be a lot more equipped and comfortable with that emotion. And you'll start to realize your patterns around it. You'll start to realize that it comes up and then it subsides and maybe the first few seconds of doing something like a Facebook Live or an Instagram post, they're the scariest and then you kind of like realize it's not that bad. And that's actually a proven psychological thing where they have studied emotions and how they rise and fall in the body and found that emotions generally live about 90 seconds in the body. And so if you're just all day kind of going through the motions and you have this low grade fear about things, that really doesn't give them a chance to just come and go, right? So I actually say, like, let the fear happen, experience it, it's fine. Can you sit with it for 90 seconds? Can you feel what comes up? Can you look at it in the face and realize that it always subsides? And there's a certain point and threshold where it always gets less. And you know what you did? You just sat in the middle of your fear and survived it, right? So there's really, it's not the action or the thing that you have to fear. It's kind of like your own emotions, right? Because it's actually not that scary clicking send on an email. It's not that scary pressing the button, go live. It's the feelings that you have about it. It's the emotions that it stirs up in you. But if you start to realize that you can handle any emotion and you can sit through the fire of it and still get through it and survive, you become more unstoppable. A third trait that I see as especially valuable for new business owners or people creating their dream life is com being committed, right? Like dedication. And I don't even mean discipline. At first I wrote discipline when I was thinking about this, but I actually don't agree with that. I think you can show up with all your mess, any laziness you have. I think if you are not someone who can grind 20 hours a day, it doesn't matter. I think what really matters is just this commitment to showing up and to doing it consistently, right? I heard this great question posed on Instagram. I really loved the way that this woman put it because she said, if you knew that if you, like after 10 weeks of you showing up every day for your health goals, you would have, re you know, you would reach your health goals. You would be healthier. You would be in the shape that you want. You, would you show up for those 10 weeks every day, right? Or would you stop at week eight because you hadn't seen the results yet? Would you stop the day before week 10, right? Of course you wouldn't because you were guaranteed that you would get the result on week 10. And so I think the same thing can be true for entrepreneurship where sometimes you get going and because there's almost this lag where you don't see their results right away, where it takes time for people to catch on to what you're doing, to trust you as the expert, um, especially if you're changing around a lot, right? That can be a resetting time. So it's like we almost give up too soon, right? We get uncomfortable and we don't feel the immediate satisfaction and so we stop when if you just kept going, you know, day after day and month after month, there's almost no way within a few years that it would work, 
right? And so I think that that is something to cultivate more than more than even discipline, but just like dedication to your craft and showing up consistently. And that means finding a way to do it that you love, right? Like, because you're not going to be able to be consistent at something that you hate. I mean, even the gym, right? With the health example, I know I'm not going to keep going to the gym if I have to run every day because that's not for me. But I love a good at-home workout that I can do without even having to commute to a gym. Like I love something that involves a little like Pilates or sometimes weights or whatever. I like honestly variety in my workout, but I can be consistent showing up in my workouts every day. Right. And the same thing can be true for business, where if there's a way you're forcing yourself to do something because you think that's how you have to do it, ask yourself, what is a way that I could love doing this thing today? What's the way that I could love building my business today? And then do that thing tomorrow and the next day and the next day and keep repeating because if you love it, all you're trying to do is just find a way to get goals by building practices that you actually can repeat over and over again until you get the success you desire. Okay, so I think that commitment is such a big one. And I've mentioned this before, but I have this mastermind sister who I love and learn so much from, and she has really built a business off of um, it, like even accentuating the fact that she considers herself a little bit lazy, right? Like she's like, I want to work part time. I don't want to spend all day in a cubicle in an office. Um, she's like, I want to sit in my pajamas and order in food and make thousands of dollars. And her audience loves her. They rave about her, right? Because it's so genuine and it's just so her and it gives other people permission to be so them. So, and for her, so discipline may not be her trait, but she does have dedication. She does have consistency and she has found a way to do the work that she loves in a way she loves so she can be committed. So I think that is more of the trait and the essence to go for. And then the last trait, one of the most important ones is resourcefulness, right? Because there will always be a reason you can't do something. There will always be someone with more money, more time, more whatever you fill in the blank that you think that you need um, or the reason you're not doing the thing that could move you forward, right? But I think resourcefulness is what can separate you, right? So if you can find the money, if you can find the resources, if you can be clever and creative and savvy and find a way to take on a side hustle, right? Or to make ends meet or to sell something on Poshmark that you don't even use anyway, right? If you can be resourceful, if you can use your commute to learn something new online, if you can use your lunch break, right? If you can use the time you would spend scrolling social media um, to build a business, if you can be at the gym and on the treadmill, but watching online videos instead to grow your own business, like there's so many ways to be resourceful with your time. Um, and obviously like it's so limited for so many people, right? Who have families and who have kids and who have all the things, but then is there a way to delegate out? Is there a way to go to a coffee shop for two hours on the weekend and batch your work so that the rest of the week it's all set? Right, and I don't presume to know your situation, and, and I don't, but I'm just trying to give ideas to start that resourcefulness muscle because I think that's what really, really makes the difference. And I've heard people say this, I can't remember who, if it's JLo or <laughs> whoever it is, but someone had mentioned that they can always beat someone with hard work, right? And I don't actually believe in this hustle mentality um, the way that it's talked talked about generally right i don't think it's actually that healthy i think rest is part of building something and working but i apply it to resourcefulness for sure where i'm like you may not always have all the connections all the money all the time whatever all the x fill in the blank but you if you have the resourcefulness to figure it out and to get scrappy and to still get what you want and to find a way to make it happen you'll beat everyone, right? You will get where you want to go and it's probably so much faster. And so I think that's really a question to build with yourself is like, if I had to do this, what would I do? Not because you have to do all the things you come up with, but because it'll teach your brain to think in a new way. And you might actually realize that there's always a way to be creative and that there are solutions hitting inside of you that you didn't even realize, but because you asked a better question, you now get access to them. 
because you don't shut them down and say, oh, how can they do it but not me, right? That's a horrible question because you don't get any good answer that helps you. But if you can say, how could I do this? How could I find the time? How could I find the resources? You're going to get better answers, right? And you might find some that you really like. And they will certainly get you to where you want to go a lot faster and a lot more joyfully than otherwise. So those, I think, are some amazing traits to cultivate as a new entrepreneur. And if you have some of them, like give yourself a hug and be like, I got that. How can I grow that more? How can I lean into that? But it's the traits of vision. Can you see what you want in the future? Can you make your future bright and colorful and dream even bigger than you currently thought you could? Courage. How can you stand in the face of your fears and feel the emotion and move through it because you're stronger than any emotion? Commitment. How can you find a way to show up and do something little that moves your business forward every day consistently because that compounds over time? And lastly, resourcefulness. How can you no longer say, I can't do that, or that's for someone else, or must be nice? But how can you train your brain to instead think, how could I find the time, the money, or whatever I need to take that next step, to get the thing that supports me, to get the thing that takes me to the next level, to become that bigger, better version of myself, to build the business of my dreams, to move towards my dream life, to let my hopes be stronger than my fears. So I hope that these serve you. Send me a DM on Instagram at hi Jessica Johnson. Let me know if you'd have any others or which one is like your superpower and which one you want to grow. Um, I love to hear from you. I genuinely do. And just so grateful to be on this journey with you. And then remember, last call for Content Business Blueprint before it closes and you can no longer get into the next round, your last day. So check out contentbusinessblueprint.com to learn a skill that will always enable you to have location freedom, schedule freedom, financial freedom, and creative freedom. You are worth it. I would be honored to support you and thank you so much for being here. If this episode resonated with you, I have two things you are going to love. One is a Bright Life workbook full of practices you can use to get clear on what your version of your brightest life looks like and fearlessly move towards it every day. And another is a copywriter starter kit full of beginning steps to create a copywriting business that gives you the freedom to travel the world working from anywhere, to replace a corporate salary as your own boss, and to do creative work that lights you up every day. It's lessons I've learned in creating my own content business, and I'm excited to share it with you if you're curious about doing the same. I will link these in the show notes. I hope these serve you. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you back here next week as we all pursue our biggest, brightest lives together.